I'm Hao Zhou, and today I'll present our work, One Class Model for Fabric Defect Detection. The work is done by Hao Zhou, Yixin Chen, David Trondo, and Bian Jin. We are from University of Mississippi. From the title, it's clear that we are trying to solve the fabric defect detection problem. We want to build an automated system that is able to detect fabric defects. The reason is uh, we observe that nowadays in textile industry, the final inspection step is still done by humans. However, you know, human labors can be quite inconsistent due to several reasons, such as eye fatigues, when you staring something uh, for too long, and some distractions. For example, when you talk to your colleague, colleagues, that can cause distractions. Human labors are known as being uh, slow, inconsistent, erroneous, and expensive sometimes. So our motivation is that, can we build a, a well-automated system to replace human labors, to have some nice properties, such as fast, consistent, accurate, and inexpensive. Well, nothing is easy, uh, as we all know that. Uh, there are some challenges in our way. The first one is fabric defects, which can be very different in terms of size and shapes. Uh, These figures below are some examples of fabric images with defects. Uh, they are uh, annotated by red arrows. As you can see from these figures, defects on the fabrics can be anywhere, uh, any size and any shape. Uh, there's no concrete list of defects predefined, uh, which makes the problem even harder because we don't know what classes we are looking for. It's quite different from the like the the problem to different differentiate between cats and dogs. You you know what two classes are, but in your case, we don't know what classes we are trying to solve. The second uh, challenge is that. In reality, we actually don't, don't see many examples of fabric defects when comparing with normal uh, fabrics or fabric, fabrics without defects. This is making sense because uh, most of fabric being produced are normal or they are ready to sell. So, so the number of fabric defects are way smaller than the number of fab, uh, fab, fabrics without defects or normal fabrics. This this this. This disadvantage is actually hindering us from utilizing some deep learning algorithms where a well-balanced data set is, is uh, necessary. The last one is background can also differ. Uh, still in these images, you can see different types of backgrounds similar to different types of defects. Uh, different backgrounds uh, can be sometimes tr uh, tricky. So in order to solve such challenges, uh, some people design algorithms to, to classify different types of defects. But as I mentioned, uh, there's no concrete list of defects predefined. Uh, while some people are focusing on optimizing texture analyzers such as gobble filters for specific fabrics, those methods are limited by either lacking of negative samples or they are uh, suffering from different types of fabric backgrounds. We instead propose a one class model which combines one class, uh, class uh, classification and the uh, gobble filter bank. By using one class uh, classification, we can only focus on positive samples or samples without defects. So we ease the effort to build a balanced data set or collect negative samples. We don't uh, care how many like classes in defects anymore. By using a gobble filter bank, instead of uh, just uh, using some opti optimized gobble filters, we can cover uh, most uh, fabric backgrounds by having different combination of uh, orientations and uh, uh, bandwidth. Those are some uh, parameter parameters of a uh, gobble filter. And we are no longer need to optimize for certain type of fabrics. Um, our system has two stages. In the training stage, uh, the input to our system is normal fabric or uh, fabric without defects. 
Then going through our GABA filter bank, we get the different responses from it. You can see from this figure, we get uh, after GABA filter bank, we get magnitude responses. Then we crop the responses into patches for uh, feature selection by our, by our autoencoder. The features are saved for later use. In the testing stage, in the, the input now can be any anything. Uh, I mean, uh, it can be either normal or defective images. The first few steps are the same, going through the uh, GABA filter bank, then get the uh, responses, and then, then crop into images, going through the same autoencoder, uh, get the facial vectors. Then the facial vectors from the autoencoder will be fed into our nearest neighbor density estimator, along with the saved feature vector set in the training stage uh, to classify if the patch or feature vector is normal or defective. Uh, lastly, we uh, overlay the results on the input. Our system is built on uh, AMD APU and uh, NVIDIA GTX 1070 GPU. Uh, we use Python and PyTorch to build a system. To validate our system, we use the standard fabric defects glossary dataset, which contains high uh, quality fabric images. Uh, here, I mean, the resolution is 512 by 512. Uh, of course, the fabric images, they are uh, containing different patterns, backgrounds, and defects, etc. Uh, I think more importantly, I have to introduce uh, the matrix I used here. We use a matrix called conditioned true positive rate or CTPR. Uh, CT, uh, I mean, TPR are originally called uh, recall, but here, conditioned TPR or CTPR is the TPR or recall when the false positive rate or ratio of false alarm is zero. The tuition behind is that we want to make sure our system cannot misclassify normal fabrics into defective fabrics. Because uh, as we know, defects are still rare compared to normal fabrics. If our system misclassify normal into defective fabrics, this will cause or result in significant economic costs. Next, we show some realization results from our system. Uh, this is the results for plain fabric, uh, meaning that there's no complex patterns as backgrounds in the fabric images. As, as you can see, our system can detect defects pretty well, especially when some defects are very close to the normal fabrics. Uh, for example, the last two images of the second row, the defects are actually similar to the backgrounds. The backgrounds are uh, consist of like two columns interleaving with each other, uh, white columns and uh, red columns. The, the, the defects actually is white column, but it's wider than the normal white column. So uh, having such cases, our system is still able to work, can detect the defects. And also you may say that our results or the predicted defects are larger than the actual defects. Uh, this is true, and this is because we classify patches instead of pixels. Uh, the patch size uh, here is uh, 32 by 32, which is fairly small compared to the fabric images, uh, 512 by 512. And we think this is not a big issue, because if you think in reality, after uh, some defects are uh, found, the machine will just cut off the defects along with some margins. So, for a uh, quality control issue or safety issue. Uh, so in our case, if the uh, predict defects are large, are you uh, just a little bit larger than the normal defects? I think that's totally fine. This is the results uh, for patterned fabric, which means now the backgrounds are more complex than previous one. As you can see, our system can still work uh, under different types of uh, backgrounds. Oh, even sometimes the backgrounds are very uh, complex. Uh, next, we quantify the results using the matrix we, I just mentioned, CTPR. And just a reminder, CTPR is the, uh, is the recall when the FPR is zero or false alarm is zero. There is no false alarm. 
So in this table, we compare our autoencoder with handcraft features and the PCA features. For handcraft features, the mean value and the standard deviation value were calculated for each patch. And for PCA, uh, we reduce the dimension of each patch as feature selection. And it's clear that we all, our autoencoder is better in any cases. And the improvement is about 13% uh, for all fabrics. Next, I will show you different combination of parameters in our GABA filter bank. Uh, when we decrease the number of orientations and or bandwidth, uh, the CTPR will also decrease while the processing speed will increase. Uh, in our system, we use 90 filters in our, in our uh, GABA filter bank. Even it's uh, maybe slower sometimes, but we think accuracy matters when speed di didn't change much as you can see from these figures. Uh, lastly, we show that our system can work even for slightly rotated fabric images, because in uh, real world, fabric, fabrics cannot align with margins of uh, machines all the time. So to simulate such cases, we manually rotate fabric images at different angles, then we uh, predict them by our system. In this big picture, big, big picture, each column is images rotated at some angles. For example, from left to right, we have 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.2, 2, and 5 degrees. When the rotation angles increase, increasing, uh, the prediction results or the predict results are getting worse. Uh, however, the, from the realization results, you can still see see the where the defects are. So we think the OR system can still work under uh, slightly, slightly rotated fiber images. In conclusion, uh, we propose a one class model for fabric defect detection. We utilize one class classification and the uh, GABA filter bank to deal with uh, different types of defects, uh, different types of backgrounds, and we don't need to collect negative samples or defective samples or optimize GABA filter for some, some certain types of fabrics. We also utilize a simple autoencoder to learn better feature uh, representation and we compare it with uh, against uh, handcraft and uh, PC PCA methods. And lastly, we show that our system works for plain and the patterned and even rotated fab fabric images.